Welcome to 5.2, using perpendicular bisectors. Now you know from earlier in geometry already that a bisector is just a line that cuts another line into two equal lengths. Well, a perpendicular bisector is if we have a line and we have a bisector come through it that cuts it into two equal lengths, it's going to do that, but it's also going to be perpendicular. So that means it has to be a right angle to the thing that it's bisecting. A special property of perpendicular bisectors is that every point on this line is going to be equidistant from the endpoints of the line that was bisected. So whether it's here, these lengths will end up being the same, or it could be right here. And the lengths that are formed here should be the same. As always, never trust the drawings. Uh, so we're going to go and work now with something called the perpendicular bisector theorem and the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. So we actually, what we just talked through was the perpendicular bisector theorem. Any point along a line that is a perpendicular bisector is going to be equal distances or equidistant from both endpoints of the line that's being bisected. Now, the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem says that, let's say we don't have this full line here. Let's say we've got a point that's just down here. Uh, oops, come on, I said color. There we go, we've got a point down here. But we know that the distance from that point to the two endpoints are the same. The converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem says that, therefore, this point must be on the perpendicular bisector. So if we know it's a perpendicular bisector, any point on that line is going to be equidistant from the two endpoints. It works in reverse. If we know it's equidistant from the two endpoints, then that means it has to be on the perpendicular bisector. So let's try some problems with this. So BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. We need to find AD. Well, if we know that this line right here is going to be the perpendicular bisector, that means that the lines going from that to the endpoints have to be congruent. Or in other words, the length 3x plus 14 has to equal 5x. Well, we can solve this now. Subtract the 3x from both sides, get a 14 equals 2x, divide by 2, x has to equal 7. And that's all the more there is to that one. We can also do it with one that looks more like this. Uh, so we know in this case that wx is the perpendicular bisector of yz, and we want to know which segment lengths are the same length. Well, we can see that yv is going to be the same length as vz, because they were both labeled as being 25 units long. We know it's a perpendicular bisector, so yx has to be the same length as xz. And uh, we can see that point w is on the perpendicular bisector, so that means yw has to be the same length as wz. We have three different segment lengths that are equal. That's exciting. Now the question is V on line WX. Well, it has to be because if WX is the perpendicular bisector and V is the same distance away as from Y as it is from Z, yes, it has to therefore be on the perpendicular bisector. Now we're going to go and talk about something else called concurrency. And concurrency is just when you have multiple lines that are all intersecting at the same point. They are all concurrent at that point. So they call it concurrency. So if we are going to go and look at the concurrency of our various perpendicular bisectors within a triangle, that means we're going to take our perpendicular bisectors from the triangle and we're going to draw them so that they come out and are nice 
and even. There we go. And in this case, they all intersected right here. So now we're actually going to talk about a theorem that goes along with this. So what we know about perpendicular bisectors is every point on those lines is the same distance away from the endpoints. Well, that means if all three of these lines are intersecting at the same place, that means that point is going to be the same distance away from all three vertices because each of our perpendicular bisectors is the same distance away from two other vertices. So once we do it for all three, that means this point has to be the same distance away from B as it is from C as it is from A. And that's going to be the concurrency of, per of perpendicular bisectors theorem. Well, let me just quickly double check. Um, yeah. So if we have this point that is concurrent from all of them, all three of these lengths have to be the same. And that would be our theorem. Now, a good use of this theorem, We've got an ice cream distributor and they distribute to three different stores. Where should the distributor be located to minimize the transportation cost? Well, it should be right in between all the stores that it distributes to where it will be an equal distance to all the different stores. So if we go and we draw a line from A to C, we find the midpoint. Oh, no, that's going to be more about the midpoint. Uh, and we make our perpendicular bisector. Well, we can do the same thing again with C to B. Find our midpoint, perpendicular bisector. And we can do the same thing again from A to B. You find your midpoint perpendicular bisector. This point right here has to be the same distance away from A, B, and C. So that's where the ice cream distributor should locate their warehouse. The last thing with this is going to be something called the circumcenter. And the circumcenter is a fancy term that relates a circle. Uh, you sort of see the start of the word circle to the word center. Uh, and this is one way to try to describe the center of a triangle. We're actually over the next few sections going to work with a number of different centers of a triangle. Uh, and the circumcenter just happens to be the first one. Now the circumcenter uh, is actually right here where we just found that center of the triangle from the perpendicular bisectors. Uh, and what the circumcenter says is this point you, we can then create a circle with this as its center, and it's going to go through all of your vertices in the creation of that circle. So the circumcenter will let you find the center of a circle whose outside edge goes through all three vertices of the triangle. And so that's just another way to sort of try to relate these together. And that's going to be a weird thing in chapter five. We're going to be relating triangles and circles together using circumcenters and a few other things. But that's it uh, for this section. So good luck. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.